Hey, welcome to the Happy Ramp Podcast. I am Ted Cluck, joined as always in studio by my good friends, my partners in radio, Barnabas Piper, Ronald J. Martin. Boys, we got a couple of fun things to discuss this morning, but before we do, Piper, let's do some business. Tell us about Dwell Bible. I would love to tell you about Dwell Bible. I'd love to tell our listeners about Dwell Bible because Dwell has been one of our longest... Full disclosure, standard. I know about Dwell Bible, but but our listeners Oh, okay. Not. Well... Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's true. We probably we should be we should always be genuine on this and not pretend like I'm informing you about something new. I'm listening though. I'm dialed in. Okay, I want you to know that. That I, makes I, that I makes one of the two times. of you. That's good. Um, yeah. Listeners, Dwell Bible is a full kind of a full service, full listening Bible audio app. So they they have a, a whole set of features more than just being able to listen to the text straight through. There are playlists and listening plans and musical backgrounds and multiple Bible versions and multiple narrators so that you can find a way to listen to scripture that works best for you, that fits into your life well, that you can, they have features that allow you to go to sleep listening to it and it'll shut off. They have memorization features. They have, they have a read along feature. So if you're somebody who likes to listen and read or pause it so you can kind of reflect and then have it read back to you, however it works, they've got it. If you go to dwellapp.io slash happy rant, you can check it out. They also have a special discount for our listeners. It's 33% off of the lifetime subscription and 10% off of the annual. So the lifetime subscription is about a $50 savings. It's pretty significant. This is a great way to engage scripture especially for those of us who are really busy and really struggle with spiritual disciplines, which I think is probably most people, uh, it's hard to sit down and take a significant amount of time reading the Word on a regular basis. So if that's something you just kind of constantly feel like you're on a bit of a starvation diet of Bible, this is a great way to supplement that. Get more in your commute, in your exercising, your mowing of the lawn, whatever it is you're doing. I, for those of you who live up north, you're almost on the uh, on the shoveling of sidewalks time of the year. And so you can listen to it while doing that. So again, go to dwellapp.io slash happy rant and check it out today. Piper, wonderful job. Thank you for that. Um, speaking of Piper, one of us has a dad who's famous for writing and preaching. Um, full disclosure, if you're new to the program, it's Barnabas Piper. His dad is John Piper. And uh, Pipe, you sent something into the, the group chat a couple of days ago that um, Ronald and I both got a kick out of. And it's a new self-published book. And this guy's about to get more publicity for this book than he's ever gotten for any other single thing in his life. So this is a big moment for whoever wrote this thing. Uh, but the book is called The Pied Piper. Is John Piper and New Calvinism destroying the church? Um. <laughs> You dropped this into the group chat, and the first comment from Ronald was "self-published?" question <laughs> mark Which I think, I think the answer is uh, is without question a yes on self-published. It just had the look, and uh, I don't I don't even know that I could describe that anymore. But um, if you've been around publishing for any amount of time, you know the look. Um, and then there are some other things said in the group chat that I can't I can't repeat on this program. <laughs> Let's, um, let's just it say epic. it was it was some uh, it was some typos and autocorrects that turned innocuous sentences very profane by accident, which Ted got yeah. the glee out of. <laughs> Fascinating stuff going on there. In that I'm eternally twelve years old, um, boys. I have I have questions on this thing. Um, my first question is, how long do we get to keep calling it New Calvinism? <laughs> I feel like this was the this was the brand name like 20 years ago. And uh, is there like a statute of limitations on that? How about the um, middle age Calvinism? Or have we yeah, reached, middle age, have middle we age Calvinism? <laughs> is it destroying the church? Um, has I so, mean, how much has Calvinism really changed since like the Synod of Dort? I, I feel like it's there's true. not a lot there's not a lot of new going on. It's more like people discover it and they think it's new. Is the Synod of Dort the one from like the 1960s or like the the, the 60s, like from like the first century? Which one like, is that? Like 60 AD. 
you know. <laughs> I, I think it's a little later than 60 AD because it involved a lot of Dutch people, and I don't think there were Dutch people in 60 AD. I don't think would they, this well, be they like been, 460 They hadn't AD? self-identified as Dutch yet. Oh, if you ask the Dutch people, they they were there and they were the best back then too. Um, <laughs> I mean, if you ask the Dutch people, Adam and Eve were Dutch. You know, <laughs> yeah, the, Adam Van Vandersma. He was a real hardworking guy. Salt of the earth. D- didn't didn't spend in his time. wife in his wife Eve Bavink. Eve ba- didn't do anything on Sunday. He really uh, he took it seriously. Um, only sm- only smiled on Christmas. It was delightful. Really, tons of fun. Exactly. Very serious guy in the garden. Um, it's a miracle he yeah. ever gave into temptation. Piper, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, I want to ask you a question about this because this is something that Ronald and I just can't relate to in that we don't have famous dads. Um, if someone wrote a book like this about my dad, I feel like my impulse would be to find this person and hurt him. Um, what do you have to say about that? Was that, was that an impulse for you at all? Or are you just used to this kind of content? Um, I, you know, this kind of content I don't get used to because some, like, it's one thing if somebody tweets dumb stuff or accusatory right. things and those usually, you know, they just kind of get washed away in the stream of internet content in, and I've watched my parents be very thick skinned and sort of Teflon to this sort of thing for a long time. And it, Mm -hmm. it doesn't even, it doesn't seem to have any effect on their life. I mean, I'm sure they, they're aware of it to a degree, but they just sort of are like, well, some people are mean. And, uh, but this is different because I, this, this thing's 120 pages long. So that's like, well, like 30,000 words, give or take. Yeah. Yeah. That's a significant amount of output, uh, to, to talk about the destruction of the church. The church by this new, old, old, new, middle-aged Calvinism. Uh-huh. But, uh, so it, I, I'm mostly intrigued. Like, I want to meet this guy, is really what it yeah. is. Like, I want to know what, like, what got in his mind that yeah. made him so concerned about the danger of my dad. Yeah. And I'm also, yeah. like, he seems to fall into the same category to me a little bit as the people who reach out to me to tell me that my dad's theology ruined their life, as yeah. if by dragging me into this, they feel better or something. Yeah. I, that happened recently. A lady reached out and was like, your dad's theology nearly ruined my marriage. And she was, like, gleeful about having left the church. And I just responded yeah. and said, how do you want me to respond to this? Like, this is on Twitter. Yeah. Like, I don't, but I'm not really sure how to respond. And she right. basically said, well, you, you're either on his side or you're on my side. And I was like, well. Interesting. And mute. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't quite know what to do with these when somebody, somebody has, I mean, I've written a couple books that are about this length. And it's, uh-huh. you know. It's a significant it's a of amount of effort to to yeah. to do it, and I I'm gonna guess he didn't do it well. But just just to put out that many words, even if they're just slop, is a fair amount of effort. So, uh, yeah, I want to I want I want to meet Enoch Burke and know who this mm-hmm. guy is. I want to know like how would how would he react to me in person if he was like, oh, that's one of like Satan's spawn. How does how does he yeah. how does he respond to me? That's a great question, and um, yeah, I don't know, like I. I don't like conflict and the thought of like you and him being in the same room fills me with like adjacent anxiety actually. Um, so I don't think I, I don't think I actually want that to happen, but there's a, there's a part of me that would like it to happen. Can we do a minute on like how your dad holds up as like a, a punching bag? Because I feel like there are better and easier punching bags for reformed them now. And I feel like it's, it's kind of lazy to keep going after your dad. Um, Ronald, you, you keep up with the world of, of celebrity pastors probably more than either of us. Where are we at on Pipe's dad as a punching bag? And aren't there better options at this point? Yeah, I mean, it's actually a good question. I mean, I think because he's one of the, the godfathers of the new movement, which we just obviously right. have renamed the middle, the middle age movement. Um, right. I mean, uh, you know, the guy, the, the guy that's first through the gate is always going to, you know, is always going to get the majority of the mud slinged at him. So I think, Mm -hmm. I think that's just inevitable that you're going to have pipe and Timmy K and these kind of more, you know, these older guys that are, that are sort of the, um, you know, the fathers of the movement. They're just Mm -hmm. going to continue to get 
um, they're probably going to take the majority of the hits. Um, yeah. So I, I don't know that there's any getting around that because it's just it's the nature of what we do. We we tend to want to go to the root and the source of what we think all of our problems are, and, rather than the people that have been influenced by them. I mean, I, there's going to be a generation down the road. Uh, when, you know, all due respect to Pipe, all these other dudes have sort of passed on and, you know, there's going to have to be some new people to sort of target for sure. But um, I, I think my first question to Enoch would be, dude, is that your real name? Is, it's a is, solid is, name, dude. Is Enoch, mean, were, were you were you birthed with Enoch or did you like, was that like a self, did you like, did you give yourself that name later? Because you're like, you're like the original like gospel proclaimer you know from like back in the day i I, i'm so curious about that because i don't know my experience i haven't met a ton of enochs you know i mean i same it's not common i knew one in college and he was a really like mild-mannered uh sweet guy the kind of guy who you're like oh i don't know how anybody dislikes that guy he's just he's just kind of kind all the time i feel like enoch's real name is eric and he just went uh, he just was like my name isn't powerful enough it's not biblical enough it's easily so i'm gonna run with enoch He's yeah. he's Irish, so I'm looking at his bio, and it it lists all of his degrees, um, multiple bachelor's degrees we... and one master's degree. Oh, and uh, what are we looking at there? And it looks like he, uh, he from it, it's some university in Galway, Ireland. And well, that means he, he spelled it with a K, then Eric with a K. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, so yeah, he's the the. The copy for this book is really interesting. You know, the Amazon's descriptive copy. So this book takes a scriptural look at John Piper, which is really fascinating. I didn't realize John Piper was in scripture. Uh, whose influence over... He did a word study on John Piper. Yeah. From scripture. It's, yeah, they, they, they conjugated John Piper. Uh, whose influence <laughs> over the church in the past three decades has been immense. The author is a young Christian who once read Piper's works and was captivated by the popularity and success of the movement, which Piper is the undisputed father of. Look, Enoch, well, everything in this world is disputed right now. Let's not go that far. That's true. And that movement would be the new Calvinism. And uh, yeah, Piper's greatest impact, blah, 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 blah. And so uh, Enoch is challenging his authenticity, despite glaring inconsistencies in his life and doctrine. Hmm, this sounds like a personal attack. Now I like this guy less. Uh, This book examines the doctrine and fruits of John Piper in the context of the demise and true holiness in the church today. Um, So what I gather is he thinks John Piper is a hypocrite and is at fault for the church's failings over the last 30 years. That's a a rather sweeping claim. Mm. Yeah, that's that's a big one. You know what else I noticed? Go ahead, yeah. There's a grammatical mistake on this cover. Okay. Read the subtitle. Yeah. Right. Uh, title is The Pied Piper, colon, Is John Piper and New Calvinism Destroying the Church? Yeah. That, Tough. That, that'd be our John Piper and New Calvinism Destroying the Church. It's, yeah. it's, it's a little tough to take somebody seriously who does that on their cover. Also, the uh, the... The classic art sort of engraved image of the dude in the pointy hat playing the clarinet while the rats follow him is just a strong I was going to do a minute on that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Go let's, for it. Let's stay there for a minute. Um, okay, so divorcing ourselves from the content of someone taking shots at my friend's dad. Let's, let's put that aside for a minute. If you're going to do a book called The Pied Piper and... You're self-publishing it, which means everything's on the table cover image-wise. Um, and you want to go with this classic like guy playing the clarinet and rats following him, which I think is actually kind of solid. you know. So shout out Enoch Burke for that. Um, why do you not put John Piper's face on the clarinet guy? You know what I mean? That wouldn't have been that hard to do. I mean, we could put a man on the moon right now. You can't put John Piper's face it, behind the clarinet. Like to me, that's just a that's low hanging fruit, you know. He he and, he left and some meat on the bone there. Let's take this out a little further. Couldn't we put like yeah. David Platts and and Katie Wise oh, and whoever's like faces on like the at. little rats? Like if we're gonna start yeah. throwing out claims of how he's leading everybody astray, couldn't we do stuff like that too? I feel like Enoch. If really there's a hundred rats, here. maybe maybe my face gets on there. You know, like way way in the background a little bit. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I just I feel like that that's a thing that needed to happen. Um, 
at Jared C's face on a little rat. I mean, come on. How hard would Yeah, that I mean, be? you made the top 100 list, and I think you've moved up a few spots because a few of those people have bailed on uh, evangelicalism so Man. or reformed yeah. them. So, I mean, you're, just, you, should, you should be like the 94th rat here at some point. I would love that. Thank you so much. I mean, that, that, means, that means the world. I mean, you know. what, what higher praise could you get early in the morning than you should be the 94th rat? Tech Clock 94th rat. That, that would be my bio. Um, you know, no, no, more, no more explanation needed. Um, boys, anything else on the Pied Piper? I'm wondering, I just am curious what Enoch's going to do next because <clears throat> this, this book that, you know, one of the promotional things is the, by the author of The Hedonism and Homosexuality of John Piper and Sam Albury. Oh. Like, who's he going after next? Like, I, I know Sam well. Sam, Sam right. when, when he's not stuck in England because of COVID, uh, goes to my church and serves with us. And, I, you know, this guy this guy's just gunning for all the people I like. So I'm just curious, who's yeah. next? Is it like, you know, Ray Ortland is the worst? Or like Ted and, Ted and Ronnie are jerks? Like, what, <laughs> what, what book is next? Well, he wouldn't be wrong about that. So um, I would be interested in the cover art, though. What, I mean, maybe what, he could reach out to Adrian from last week and get some images of Ron to If he was going to write a book about this podcast, what would it be? Like, mm. it would be like <clears throat> the heresy rant, you know, photo shoots, faux journalism, and, you know, riding daddy's coattails or something like that. Totally. That works as a sub. Gosh, um, I would love that so much. That would give me <laughs> so much joy. I mean, it would just, I can't tell you how that would just be a day maker for me. If there was like a thirty thousand word hit piece out there about our our, I would small love a, I would love somebody to be so offended by this program of all programs that they would actually like write like just yeah write a thirty thousand word hit piece or even self publish a book. I would I, in fact we should throw that out there. We would love somebody to self publish a book if they find this program that offensive. Which we, we might be self publishing our own book if these supply chain issues continue. <laughs> third world America's it's taken a taken a bite out of our business um yeah that that would be interesting wouldn't it baby um now you're an Enneagram 4 I am as well um I think it like I'm laughing at the concept of that happening but if it were to actually happen I think I'd be sad um would you be sad at all I feel like you're a little bit more Teflon Don about this stuff than I am no, I actually, I like stuff like that. I think it's funny, especially when it doesn't have any, if it has no, um, if, it ha- if it really has no connection with the truth, you know, it's just some guys, it, this, it's a guy that has something else going on and he's just like kind of getting it out on us, which is clearly the case with Enoch and, and Pipes, Pipes Pops. Um, so I'm, I'm never bothered by that. If somebody is saying something, if, some, if somebody's exposing something that's actually truthful and man, it requires us to go, you know what, we were wrong. That, yeah, I'm super bothered by that because I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be damned. Because admitting that we're wrong stinks. Who wants to do that? Yeah, that's never fun, but I'd rather, do, you know, so yeah, that will, I'll be sad about that because it's like, well, sure. shoot, may, maybe we've misjudged this. Maybe we've said, you know, we've apologized on the show before, man, that was insensitive and we probably shouldn't have gone down that, gone down that road. But yeah, if it's just some guy, I just think that's funny. If it's a guy that just misconstrues uh, this show, and by the way, I, it's it's interesting to even like note that how little that has happened over the yeah. years. I mean, most That's people not get that miraculous to me. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, there's kind of, even you know even going back to the live show, you know, and having some conversations with some of the fans, and mm-hmm. and even hearing from them and saying, you know, it's it's you know to even hear them say specifically, it's crazy to me. Sometimes I'll have talks with people that you know until they understand that you're not supposed to take this seriously. They're a little funny about it. And then when they finally get that, they're all in. Um, yeah. But it's, you have to be, I, yeah. You have to be real upfront with Christians. Like at the top of every show, <laughs> we, we should almost joke. be like, here's the intent. <laughs> you know, here's three sentences on what this is going to feel like, what it's going to sound like, how you're going to respond initially, but what we want you to feel. Yeah, it's like the um, middle schoolers uh, five paragraph essay where they have to write like the thesis statement. <laughs> we need like a yeah. podcast thesis statement. In this yeah. podcast, we intend to fill in the blank. Right. And every paragraph reaffirms the thesis. You know, just by way of review, we still no longer <laughs> intend to offend you. In conclusion, still a joke. Right. Still still yeah. satirical. 
it's no wonder there's so many bad writers out there because that's the way we learn how to write. And speaking of bad writing, um, I have a theory that I want to lay on you guys. And this is born of seven years of being in academia. Um, so I've had a little like sample size on this thing. And it's not a hard and fast. It doesn't apply to everybody. But my theory is this. I think there is an inverse relationship between people carrying a canvas New Yorker tote bag <laughs> and those people actually being able to write well. Um, again, not hard and fast, not everybody, but, but kind of, you know, almost across the board, this is an observable thing. And because I work on a college campus, I see a lot of canvas New Yorker tote bags because it's a certain kind of flex for a certain kind of person. Um, the subtext is I'm a reader, I'm thoughtful, I'm probably a writer. Um, so you're, you're kind of declaring something when you sling that little canvas tote <laughs> over your shoulder. Uh, cause it's not a good bag, right? Quantifiably, you could choose, you could do like a blindfold and choose almost any other kind of bag and it would be more functional and better than that. Well, baby, uh, I want to, let me, I mean, let me yeah. cut in cause I, I get it. I mean, <laughs> Go. I get the feeling that maybe part of your, um, I mean, part of your, off- part of your offendedness about this is just literally yeah. that they have a New Yorker bag. Like they, they, cause I mean, if you asked me right now, Hey Ronnie, you should go get one of these New Yorker bags. I'd be like, how do you get a New Yorker bag? Like, how do you, you even... subscribe to the New Yorker? That's it. And they yeah, send you that's a all bag. you got to do. They send you a bag. It's like the, oh, okay. it's the free premium. Okay. Um, so remember on like Sports Illustrated when we were kids, they would send you that, that phone that was in like the shape of a football um, or they'd send you like a sweatshirt that said Sports Illustrated on it. Like the premium for the New Yorker is you get it, you get the canvas bag, okay. um, which is a certain kind of like industry flex. And it made me, it begged the question, are there other kinds of industry flexes and in other industries that are so like bald and, and out there and forward? You know what I mean? Um, Pipe, do you have any, any thoughts on that? Anything come to mind? Um, I'm trying to think like the, the thing is that the, the New Yorker is, is a much more specific brand than just about anything yeah. in terms of the kind of person. Like if somebody is a, is a diehard New Yorker reader, Mm-hmm. You can you can kind of just you can say oh I, I can probably guess what your bever- your favorite beverages are I can probably guess what kind of restaurants and coffee shops you hang out in like our parents don't read the New I probably York. know who you voted for yeah there's yeah. there's a, there's a, there's a strong political inclination there um, you've got Indigo Girls live at Budokan like in your CD player in your car. You know, yeah, you you post regularly about stuff. like there, there's you know you're gonna post about like the humane society on your social media feeds and things <laughs> like that. Uh-huh. Uh, so yeah, there's a there's there's a there's a and so they like they get it. They're like we we know who we are, we know who we're aiming at, and we want those kinds of people to carry these bags as a billboard. There's not that yeah. many other segments of the population where that works, with the exception yeah. of like certain kinds of like CrossFit. Like New Yorkers, sort of yes. intellectual CrossFit. Yes, that's right. Mm. Yeah, like you, uh, there, there's a certain kind of barbell that all the the, the CrossFit guys use, like Rogue. Um, so if you wear that black T-shirt that says like Rogue, um, is that it, dude? I gotta look this up now. I don't want to. I don't want to botch the thing. Yeah, Rogue Fitness. If you wear that T-shirt, it's like, oh yeah, we're dealing with a CrossFit guy here. Um, or a t-shirt that says CrossFit or whatever. Um, that's one that, that works. Now we'll say Southern Baptists and bow ties have this thing pretty well tied in. Like if you, if you see a dude in a bow tie, like he, he's a hundred percent a Southern, like nobody else wears bow ties. Like Colonel Sanders doesn't even wear a bow tie anymore. So it's, I think you're right. Colonel Sanders has moved on. It's sem- it's seminarians open. and Southern Baptist pastors or Southern Baptist seminarians. Like that's it. That's the bow tie crowd. They have cornered that market. Bankers don't wear bow ties. Nobody wears bow ties. Like pe- people here's, reenacting the Civil War don't wear bow ties anymore. Here's how I think it can work. Um, and I, I I use as evidence in this argument a student that I had. He since graduated. He was a great dude. This guy was a theology and missions major. He took my. 100 level journalism class, like just for fun, I think. And this dude would like every day show up in like a tweed sport coat and wearing the same tweed sport coat every day was like his thing. 
and he was known around campus as Tweed Sport Coat Guy. He would like carry a like a paperback in like the breast pocket of the Tweed Sport Coat, um, and it was his thing. And he had a good sense of humor about it, such that I saw him on campus last weekend. Like he had come back just to visit somebody, and he he was like, "Hey, I just want to let you know I got a new sport coat. I upgraded." And uh, we had a laugh about it. And to me, that's like the best kind of pretentious, I'm doing this for attention thing, but I can laugh about it. You know what I mean? Um, it almost kind of makes it not pretentious, right? If it's just, right. they have a sense of humor about it. Yeah. If it's and like they know funny, people kind of ha- have humor at his expense, but he's good yeah. with that. I mean, yeah. that's, yeah, that's cool. Is there any publication in like the Christian space that could pull off the canvas bag flex? Um I'm thinking first things. Like if first things put out a canvas tote, I could I could probably name five people who would carry one. Um, what do you guys think? Baby, I don't even know if I know what first things is. It's a magazine. Oh, sure you do. First things is like Piper explained first things to Ron. <clears throat> Honestly, dude, is I didn't even know first things was still around. Um I it's it's like a pretentious Christianity today. So 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 like an intellectual oh. flex. Christianity no today. So not like a theological journal, but like long form analysis of church cultural theological issues kind of right. thing. And but with but with like editors who wear reading glasses and kind of turn like there's there's a there's a touch of the like Ivy League snobbery about the whole thing. Totally. But, it's, but it's so the, the contributors pub? Yeah, it's a Christian pub. The contributors to first things work at universities. Okay. The contributors to Gospel Coalition are pastors. Gotcha. That's the okay. difference. I, so gotcha. here's the same the thing. type I, of content. I think First Things might be a little niche at this point or a little kind of... It doesn't have a young audience anymore, I don't think. Okay. Yeah. I think the answer is Themelios. Okay. Which I'm, is I'm in. I'm the listening. Gospel Coalition's theological journal. Mm. So here's their, yes. let, me, let me read their about page for you. Cause Hold on, Pipe. Before you move on, I'm looking on First Things, and I see uh, Carl Truman is one of the featured authors. Yep. So that, that gives us some sense of what you're talking about. For sure. Yeah. Anyway, go on. Move on. All right. So here's, here's the, Themelios is an international, evangelical, peer-reviewed theological journal that expounds <laughs> and defends the historic Christian faith. Its primary audience is theological students and pastors, though scholars read it as well. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it predates Gospel Coalition and then has been rolled under. So this is, it goes back to the yeah. 70s. But uh, this, this is it. It is the yeah, kind of the, the evangelical theological flex, you know, that, that sort of thing. And it's a Greek yeah. word, which means it, it just brands really well. I love how they're like, you know what? We're casting a wide net here. Um, we want seminary students and scholars. Like, wow, okay. Um, that, that net goes wide. So shout out Themelios. Is this, is this still the Andy Nacelli production? He used I'm to be the guy. Sh- I'm that, sure right? he's involved in it. I drove him around Chicago one time. Right, right around the time that like people were getting like GPSs in their cars, but not everybody had one, and I didn't have one, and I was kind of fumbling with a map, and he was, uh, he had some disparaging things to say, like he implied that I should have a GPS, <laughs> and we I'm like, hey, we can't all run Themelios. I mean, it's not raining money on all uh, of us, I've, you know. Ten, ten involved in it. <laughs> He's like, you're right. We we can't all. <laughs> Tens of dollars. That's right. Um, boys, anything else to say about the canvas tote? I feel like that was solid content. I feel like I want one now. I mean, I feel like yeah, I'm going to... We got to get you a canvas tote, baby. I'm surprised. Okay, so here's the thing, and I know you got a heart out, but I want to hear you on this for a minute or two. I'm surprised you haven't gone through a canvas tote phase, is all I'm going to say. Because I feel yeah. like it would have been a kind of a normal pivot for you at some point. Well, I think I think I missed it, man. I think so. I'm I'm kind of still new Calvinism with this whole thing, right? I haven't gotten yeah. to the the middle age yeah. part, which might be a canvas tote because I feel like I feel like I've I did the leather bag for a while, and now I've just morphed into kind of old man like Swiss <laughs> Army like backpack because it's so much more convenient and comfortable. Sure. 
And I feel are like you saying your eight hundred dollar been... leather bag isn't doing the doing the trick for you anymore? I mean, it's been it's been sitting largely unused now for a couple of years <laughs> because it's <laughs> oh, just not comfortable. Yeah, that's sad. No, it isn't. I yeah, mean. it's very. It hurts actually. Actually, when I when I have when I have it, it like uh, you know I. I, the side of my literally like the side of my body like has like a is is like bleeding by the end of the day. You know what? I've experienced the same thing, and it's it's funny. There may be a connection because between making something most that'll of the last, that for last for four hundred years, years are like and having stung. that thing not be super comfortable and actually wanting not, to use not it. real comfortable right. against the rib cage. So I love my saddlebag leather like bag, but I only yeah, love exactly. it around town, like. Going to and from the office, coffee shops, whatever, kind of whatever I'm doing the work. When I travel, mm. North Face backpack. Like the, nothing, nothing beats a straight up like camping style backpack for comfort and efficiency. Yeah, for sure. And nobody has nobody's created a better bag than that yet. So I that's mm. <clears throat> yeah. And you just put you can just put it over your shoulder. Perfect it's soft. dimensions like, to like. You don't know it's mm, there. You the perfect can dimensions to slide under the plane seat in front of and you. And it's like, it, man, yeah, I just I know. Nothing dude, beats I, a straight up backpack. I know. Absolutely. I know. Absolutely. I feel like the old man with the backpack, but I mean that's just that's where it's landed for me, unfortunately. You know what would go great in an old man backpack? Are some visual theology products? We Piper. are indeed. Yes. So, visual um, theology. Tell us about this company that we're now in, in a business sponsor. relationship. Also, uh, the run by a gentleman named Josh Byers, who will be helping us put out our new line of products. We are those are in the works. Websites in the works. I've been in contact with him. It's happening. Visual theology is a it's a unique Christian resource company. So it's not it's not a publishing company. It's not a clothing company. Uh, although it's kind of both of those things, their goal is to create resources that churches, Christian schools, homeschoolers, or just you can use with your family, uh, you can get your hands on these things to better understand the Word of God in full. So they have a few different books. Uh, there's visual theology, and then there's uh, then there's one focused on Scripture itself. And they essentially do some basic, very clear teaching, and then put into various visuals parts of theology or parts of scripture that are kind of difficult to conceptualize that are a little bit complex and do it really artfully. That's the thing that stands out is uh, it's not your sort of hackneyed trash Christian design that we've settled for for the last 20 years or 40 years or whatever, uh, but is really artfully done. So if you go to visualtheology.church slash happy, you can see their discounts for us. There's a 20% discount off of any purchase. So that's that can be used multiple times if you use the code happy rant at checkout. And then check out their products. They have posters, they have apparel, they have um, curriculum and books, all of which are great to use in, in really any discipleship context. Uh, really solid teaching, really great visuals. Check it out. Again, the, the URL is visualtheology.church slash happy and use the code happy rant at checkout to get that 20% discount. Piper, wonderful job. Uh, Ronald has already left us. Uh, he's off. He's off to another meeting. Busy guy. Uh, carrying his old man backpack with him as he goes. Um, <laughs> Pipe, we've done what we always do on this program. Uh, we did about 20 minutes on some guy that hates can, your dad. We certainly can. I feel like we need to. We need a pick-me-up after somebody hates John Piper. Are we doing a Patreon um, after this? I, I would like to make one final pitch to the listeners. Would somebody write a 30,000-word hit do. piece on this we podcast do. so that we can promote it, please? Yeah. I would actually like to make another pitch, now that you mention it. Josh Byers, would if you're listening. Would someone make a canvas tote bag with our logo on it and sell it and cut us in on the profits? That, I feel that like would some be a brand flex we could, uh, we could get. Happy Rank Canvas Totes, man. There's got to be some demand for that out there in the, in the general public. That'd be incredible. Yeah, I would like to make that happen. Uh, all right, Pipe. We've done what we always do. And until next time. The Happy Rant is brought to you by Resonate Recordings. If you go to ResonateRecordings.com, you can see the full range of services they offer. So if you're considering starting a podcast, they are the ones we recommend going with. Again, go to ResonateRecordings.com to see their prices, to connect with them and ask any questions, and to see what they can do to help you launch, edit, master, and improve your podcast. Again, go to ResonateRecordings.com to see what they can do to help you launch and improve your podcast.